At the Edge, the podcast ministry of Edgewood Church, Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Here's Pastor Mike Coleman with his series, Exodus, A Love Story. And then God hardened Pharaoh's heart. And you know, the, 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 his, his, his uh, wise men came to him, don't you realize that Egypt is ruined? Let them go. But he still refused to let them go because there was one God yet that he hadn't touched, and that was Pharaoh himself. You know how the Caesars were, were worshipped as gods? Well, that was, Pharaoh was himself a god. And so the final judgment on the land of Egypt was the judgment of the firstborn. And, and then finally, Pharaoh, go! And the people were saying, get out, please, before we all die. And the people went out and they plundered the Egyptians. They plundered them. So what seemed to be a very negative circumstance turned out to be one where God was able to show how powerful he really is. And we all get these times in our lives where negative circumstances come upon us. But this is not the time to turn from the Lord. You know, in the sun or rain, that song we sang, my heart will proclaim, you are good, you are good. You know, and it, it, it doesn't matter what's going on around you. God is moving on your behalf. As you continue to trust in him, that's why I, I pray that some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will depend. We will trust in the name of the Lord our God. God is the one who fights our battles for us. But we've got to cling to him. We've got to trust in him. He's doing, you know, he did all of these things to show how much he loves us. You know, and, and, it, and there, was, there was no fault of the Israelites here. They didn't do anything wrong. And the enemy attacks. You know, sometimes the enemy attacks us even though we've done nothing wrong. Sometimes we are at fault. And when we are at fault, then that's when we need to make it right. When we need to say, forgive me. But we need to always go and, and, and come back to the Lord. Because no matter how far bad we've blown it, God's going to come through. God always comes through when we look to him, when we cling to him. See, he does all these things to show us how much he loves us and, and, and because he wants us to believe in him. He wants you to believe that he can do it. And, and he wants you, in essence, to return love to him that he's given to you. That's what he's looking for. You know, I, I, I remember when Bruce Almighty first came out and I thought, how blasphemous, a terrible, who would come up with such a movie? And I thought, well, I, I should probably watch it so I can, you know, critique it. And I found that there were some really good parts in that movie. And I found that when Bruce, who now has all the power of God, is trying to make, I can't remember her name, love him again, he says, well, how can I make her love me? He says, welcome to my world. How do I, how do I get people to love me? They have free will. But know that everything that God is doing, is, is, is he, he is wooing you because he wants you to love him for who he is. Because he's greater than every other God. And when we really trust him, he can do things that in our power, you know, in our power we'll mess it all up more, more terribly. We'll just make matters worse. But when we truly look to God and we trust him, he can turn things around. So after all that takes place, God is saying, listen, I want you to remember. You know, this is, this is a good thing. And, you know, in, in, in 1 Samuel 7, when, when the Lord moves on, on, on Israel's behalf, Samuel sets up a stone and he calls it Ebenezer. He says, Hither, you know, and that stone was, hitherto has the Lord helped us. In other words, when you look at that stone, I want you to remember what I did for you. And God calls the children of Israel to remember. And in Exodus 13, 3 through 10, it says, Then Moses said to the people, remember this day. Now, to remember, you know, when they, when they finally were delivered out of Egypt and all of them, they, they sent them out and they plundered the Egyptians. They, they, went, they went rich, actually, because they plundered them. They just gave it to them. Here, here, take it and go. And so he tells them, remember this day in which you came out of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. For by a strong hand, see, by a strong hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. You know, and, and that's what it takes. 
It takes a strong hand to deliver. See, we're not strong enough to deliver, but God is. No, no leavened bread shall be eaten. Today in the month of Abib, you are going out. And when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, as he promised, which he swore to your fathers to give you, a land flowing with milk and honey, you shall keep this service in this month. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, and on the seventh day there shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten for seven days. No leavened bread shall be seen with you, and no leaven shall be seen with you in all your territory. You shall tell your son on that day. It is because of what the Lord did when we came out of Egypt. You know, do you have things in your life that you can say, I can look back and say, this is what God did in my life. This is what God did. It's because of what the Lord did when I came out of Egypt. And it shall be to you as a sign on your hand and as a memorial between your eyes that the law of the Lord may be in your mouth. For with a strong hand the Lord has brought you out of Egypt. You shall therefore keep this statute at its appointed time from year to year. And I can tell you right now that today the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread together are the oldest and the most continuously celebrated holiday on the face of the earth. That the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread have been celebrated for over 3,500 years. And they're still doing it today. Commemorating what happened. Now, a lot of them don't even believe it actually happened. But it did. God is not a man. This, this, the Word of God is truth. And this is what we're trusting in. And then it's at that point, when he tells them to remember it, don't forget it. Listen, we need to remember the things that God has done for us. Don't forget it. Write it down. That God actually shows up through a physical manifestation. He appears. God makes himself known. And in Exodus 13, 21 and 22, it says, And the Lord, the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them. Imagine what that was like. There was a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night going before them. Wow! That they might travel by day and by night. The pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. So God says, here, I've come for you and now you look, I'm here for you. I'm going to, I'm showing you, my, you know, who I am. And in, in Exodus 14, 19, it says, And then the angel of the Lord, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them. And so the angel of the Lord is, 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 is oftentimes considered a theophany. Like uh, Jesus was probably there with them. Imagine that. Because at first it says, and the Lord went before them by day. And that says, and the angel of the Lord. But the angel of the Lord is a term here for a theophany, an, an appearance of God. And in, in the book of Numbers, this pillar of cloud, it's oftentimes just called the cloud. And, and it, it, it gives the impression of a, of a, a canopy-like appearance. And that's going to come into play a little bit more when we look next week a little bit more into what the betrothal and the marriage process was with Israel and how it's all going to be lived out right here in the book of Exodus. So he's courting them. And the purpose of the pillar was to watch over the Israelites and to guide them into the promised land. God was going to go with them. God goes with you. He goes before you. He goes behind you. He's with you by night. He's with you by day. He's always with you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Cling to me. Don't turn from me. Hold on to me. But God wasn't finished yet to explain his power to the Israelites, was he? After the plagues. He was about to totally annihilate his rival. Wow. And he gives them another command. Listen to this in Exodus 13, 17, and 18. It says, When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, Lest the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. He says, I don't want them going back to the, to the, to the rival. But God led the people around by the way of the wilderness toward the Red Sea. And the people of Israel, listen, this is what it says. They went what? They went up out of the land of Egypt, equipped for battle. So here they are. They, they went up and they're, now they're out of the land of Egypt. And you say, whew, we're away from that. Because, you know, Egypt was the most powerful army in the world at that time. They were the greatest power in the world of that day. And God delivered them 
And so now they're out of, the, whew, they're out of Egypt until, until you get to chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. And he says, all right. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the people of Israel to turn back. What? What? We're free from the trouble and now you're telling us, wait, go, go back that way? Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Pihahiroth between Migdol and the sea in front of Baal Zephon and you, will, and you shall encamp facing it by the sea. They were out of Egypt. He's saying, wait, but we're, we're free. Now t- you're telling us to turn back and they turn back and they go and they go into this, this valley and there's mountains on both sides of them and they go into this valley and, and, and in this valley there's the Red Sea right side is actually uh, the, the second arm of the Red Sea and, and there they are and the Egyptian army is coming out and the Egyptian army is behind them. So mountain on one side, mountain on the other side, sea on the other side, and the Egyptian army, most powerful army in the world is behind them, and there's nowhere to go. They're stuck. What in the world are you doing, God? We were free, and you told us to turn back? God never does anything without a purpose. He never does anything without a purpose. I remember very clearly what God did in my life when he told me to turn back. Because he wanted to destroy all the rivals and all the gods in my life. This was in 1982. I was in Youth of the Mission. And um, Suzanne and I had become very dear friends. I hadn't yet asked her to marry me, but I was going to. But she was going to go on an outreach, and she was going to go to Spain for the entire summer of 1982. They were having a major outreach at the World Cup Games in, in Spain. And I think most of the time she was in um, Barcelona or Valencia. She was there for 10 weeks. And I was back in New Hampshire thinking, well, you know, what should I do? And the Lord said, turn back. Go back to Illinois. I said, what? Go back to Illinois? Because if you know my testimony, the last time I went back to Illinois, I, I lasted two weeks and then I fell and I, got, I was getting high with my brothers again. And I just couldn't seem to, get, to, to, to stop getting high. And the Lord says, I want you to go back because I want to show you how powerful I am. And there were two major gods in my life as a young man. The one that I already mentioned was marijuana. The other was Pornography. One Suzanne knew about, the other one she didn't know about. I wasn't going to tell her about that one. But the Lord said, I'm going to take you back to Illinois. You're going to be there the entire summer, and you're not going to fall. And I'm going to keep you, and I'm going to protect you, and I'm going to strengthen you. And I'm going to fill you afresh and anew with my spirit. And I was afraid. Because I, I wouldn't have any friends around me. I wouldn't have my YWAM people around me. I would be, again, I would be isolated. I would be all alone back in Illinois. And unbeknownst to me, Suzanne was saying, this is the test. If he goes back to Illinois and he blows it, I, I, I can't be with him. I need someone that I know is going to serve the Lord. She didn't tell me that. But it was my love for the Lord and my love for Suzanne that may, helped me to get through. And I began diligently reading my Bible every day, and I wrote a letter to Suzanne every day. And I think she was probably the only person in Spain who got a letter every day from some dingbat <laughs> back in. <clears throat> but see, when the Lord tells you to turn back, it's because He's going to show Himself strong in your life. Because whatever it is that's plaguing you, whatever sin that is besetting you, you know, God wants to set you free. God wants to deliver you, and he can deliver you. So he might say, turn back. Listen, I want to show you the, my power in your life. You, can, you cannot defeat this, but with me, we together are going to walk in victory. See, this is what God can do. This is what God does. And so I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up as we're going to prepare to sing. But, but listen to what God says here at the, at the very end now in Exodus chapter 14, verses 10 to 13. And this is what God is saying to some of you this morning. This is what God is saying to you. Now listen to what God is saying. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their, uh, their eyes. And behold, the Egyptians were marching after them. And they feared greatly. Greatly. 
And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians? See, God wasn't done. Sometimes when trouble comes, you know, our, our immediate reaction is go back to that other God. Marijuana wasn't bad, at, was it? No, it was. It's not going to save you. None of these other things that we run to in the time of trouble are going to do anything for us. But when trouble comes to our mind, look at immediately Egypt, the rival comes to the mind. Don't look to the rival. Look to God. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness, they say. And Moses said to the people, fear not. Stand firm. Now listen, listen. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see them again. Say that. The Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see them again again why because the Lord will fight for you the, listen look at this verse 13 verse 14 did I leave a ver I, guys go to ver oh I didn't give you verse 14 I'm a fool listen to verse 14 it says the Lord will fight for you what does he say to you and you only have to be silent you don't even have to say a word you don't have to do anything just stand back and watch what I will do. You see, this is what the Lord wants. He is wooing us today. He's saying, I want you to be mine. I want to take you to be my people. I want to be your God. I want you to be my people and I want to be your God. I'm wooing you today. God is calling you today. And he's saying, trust in me. Put your hope, put your trust in me. I am the Lord your God. And I will do it. Are you in love with the Lord today? I remember when all I knew to do was sing your name. I remember when I couldn't wait to tell someone. Have you lost that? Well, let's cry out to the Lord today and tell him, Lord, I love you. And if we've forgotten to trust in him, tell him, please forgive me. If we've run to that other God or that other thing that we, we cling to in time of trouble, say, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm going to lay that down. And I'm going to trust in you. Because he loves you so much. Let's tell him this morning that we want to fall in love with him again. Father, I just thank you and praise you for your faithfulness. I thank you that you are God, that you are the deliverer, that you are the redeemer, that you are the one who takes us to be your people. So God, move by your power and by your spirit and let faith rise in our hearts to trust you and to believe in you as we look to you, Lord God. Let's all stand and let's sing this together. the edge of darkness shining the light of truth please visit at the edge for more episodes and information